Hey y'all, it's Shannon Hicks at Lehman Library. I'm here today with the Game and Fish Commission to bring you a very special story time. Now normally, you know I like to fly solo when I do my stories, but today I've got a very special guest. I am joined by a turtle named James Brown. James belongs to one of our staff members who graciously has allowed James to be part of our story time today. So thank you to the Brown family. So the book we're reading today is called Box Turtle at Long Pond. Hey, James Brown, you ready to hear a story about, well, a story about you? He's kind of kicking his legs. I think that means yes. So we'll go ahead and read the story. Box Turtle at Long Pond by William T. George. Pictures by Lindsay Barrett George. It is dawn at Long Pond. A white mist covers the water. Little warblers awaken and fly from the tall pine trees to the blueberry bushes below. They dart to the pond's edge and take long sips of water. Something moves by a rotting birch log. All the birds are still. The log itself seems to come alive. The frightened songbirds fly off to the treetops. A head with red eyes appears from within the crumbling tree. It is a box turtle, like James. He got still and he's looking up, so I guess he knows we're talking about him, y'all. He has burrowed into the log to stay warm during the cold autumn night. The turtle slowly makes his way down to the pond. He carefully stretches out his neck to drink. The turtle crawls to a favorite spot where wild grapes grow. He spends half the morning looking for fallen grapes, but finds only three. There is a rustling in the leaves. The box turtle looks around and sees a chipmunk with a big grape in its mouth. The sun is high overhead. The morning chill is gone. The turtle looks for a rock out in the open fields and basks in the hot sun. He closes his eyes, but is still aware of the sounds around him. Gray clouds move in. A breeze turns over the leaves on the maple trees. The box turtle opens his eyes. He senses rain and heads uphill. The turtle finds shelter under an old apple tree. It rains most of the afternoon. The rain stops and the sun comes out. The heavy rains have driven the worms out of their holes in the ground. Some have crawled onto a large flat rock as quickly as he can, the box turtle bites the heads off each squirming worm. Ew. Then he goes back to eat them one by one. So, oh my gosh, he bites the heads off, then he goes back to eat them. Did not know that. Did y'all know that? I didn't know that. A young raccoon walks up to the stone. She is also looking for worms. The box turtle sees her and quickly draws himself up into a shell. The raccoon turns him over, but cannot pry the shell open with her little fingers. She eats the worms and wanders off. So see that shell is protection. The box turtle listens and waits. Hearing nothing, he opens his eyes and then sticks out his head. The raccoon is gone. He turns himself over. The worms are gone too. The sun is dropping in the sky. The air is getting cooler. The turtle is still hungry and crawls toward the grapevines. Suddenly, he stops. A grasshopper is perched on a blade of grass. The turtle opens his jaw and lunges, but the grasshopper jumps away. Did you know turtles ate grasshoppers? I didn't know that either. We're learning so much in this book. When he reaches the vines, the box turtle hears a thrashing sound. A grouse is hitting the grapes with its wings. The fruit is falling everywhere. Another grouse is feeding on the ground. He is frightened by the turtle and flies away. The box turtle eats grapes until he's full. The sun sets on the far side of Long Pond. The evening air grows colder. The box turtle burrows in the soft pine needles to stay warm and closes his eyes. It has been a long day. 
Wow, guys, what an interesting story. Stick around for a video from the Game and Fish Commission where you can learn even more interesting facts about turtles. Okay, guys, so we read our story, Box Turtle at Long Pond, and now we're here with two of our box turtles we have here at the Janet Huckabee Arkansas River Valley Nature Center. We're gonna look at some of the characteristics of these turtles, but before we do that, I want you to um, try to think about the different types of food that the turtle in the story would eat. For instance, first he went to the grapevines, didn't find many grapes, then he was able to find some worms, and he also tried to eat a grasshopper, wasn't very successful, and then at the end of the story, he made his way back to the grapevines and was able to eat the food that he needed there. So, turtles are omnivores. That means that they eat both meat and plants. Most of their diet consists of plants. Our turtles here at the Nature Center, their favorite food is strawberries and jalapenos. Now, they might not find too many jalapenos growing, but sometimes they will make their way into people's gardens. So they like all sorts of fruits and vegetables, and they also like worms. So I have uh, some worms we're gonna feed these turtles, and then we're gonna pick up the turtles and get to look at them a little bit closer. Now, when you see a turtle out in the wild, they're not usually as social as these. These turtles we've had here at the Nature Center for over 10 years, and they've been around people and they've been fed in front of people. We use these turtles a lot of times to do critter crunch, which is an activity, a program that we do each day. At two o'clock, we feed a different animal. So in the story, just like in the story, this turtle here went for the head of the worm first. And the reason for that is if there's multiple worms and they go through and they bite the head off of each worm, just like this turtle in the story, that will keep those worms from going away and going off the rock. So these turtles will go through usually and eat the head off of each worm and then go back to eat the rest of the worm. Now on their back, turtles have these patches. They're actually called scoots and they will grow and flake and shed each year. And they will often get rings on their shoots that look just like rings on a tree. So that can tell, help you tell how old they are. It's not exactly accurate because depending on their environment and how much food they have is what determines how fast they grow. Now these are three-toed box turtles and the reason why they're called three-toed box turtles is because on their hind legs, they have three toes. The female box turtles have longer toenails or claws on their back legs that helps them to dig holes in order to lay their eggs. They're also called a box turtle. I'm gonna use this one right here because on the bottom of their shell, they, they call their plastron, they have a hinge which helps them to close and they can close their, their shell completely with all of their body parts inside. And this is why they're called a box turtle. It keeps them protected from small predators these turtles are also very resilient. They can go inside of their shell and survive forest fires as well as floods. Now they aren't exactly swimmers. They do more of kind of a bobbing, almost like apples, but they are able to survive floods and they will float along until they find a creek bank and then pull themselves out. Turtles can live up to 80 years and because of that, if you are to take a turtle out of the wild, you are responsible for that turtle for the rest of its life. We would never wanna take an animal that's been in captivity and release it back into a wild population because then they could reintroduce some diseases into that wild population. So when you take an animal out of the wild, you are responsible for caring for that animal for the entirety of its life. It's much better for this turtle to remain in its home range a turtle's home range is about 10 to 25 acres, and they will spend their entire life in that home range. So when a turtle is taken out of its home range, it will spend a lot of time wandering around trying to orient itself. These turtles are very tough. They can take care of themselves, and they are much better off in the wild than they are as someone's pet, uh, especially if that pet is not going to be well cared for. 
Now here at the Nature Center, we don't consider these animals to be pets. We consider them to be represent animal species that are native to Arkansas on display for education. The difference between males and females. On their bottom shell, the plastron, a female's shell is very, very flat. A male's shell will have a curve or a dip to it. Also, male turtles, male box turtles, usually have red or orange eyes. Females usually have brown and yellow eyes. And if you look close at this turtle, you can see that her eyes are yellow with little flecks of brown. So this one is a female. Let's look at this one and see if you guys can figure out if this one is male or female. So there's her plastron. Remember, female's plastron is flat, male's is curved. And then let you look close at the eye. So if you guess that this one is also a female, you are correct. So we have two female three-toed box turtles here. If, we, if she'll let us and she'll move her feet, you can see the claws on her back legs. She's trying to move around, but she has three toes on her back leg. She's not wanting us to see it. Now, if you ever see a box turtle on the road, you can help it by, if it's safe to do so, stopping, picking that turtle up and putting it across the road in the direction that it was heading. Remember their home range is 10 to 25 acres. So they know where they're going. They know exactly where their food and their water source are. And they're just traveling. A lot of times our roads will intersect that home range. Thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the story and learning about box turtles.